Who else do we have online? Uh, before we start, just so everybody knows, we are recording this. It will be on ECTV. Um, there we go. Um, our new board members are Chet Murley and Tony Grisanti. And Carol Scarmelli uh, from Dunmore will be joining us, but she's going to be a little late. She said she probably joined about 11 o'clock. And our last board member, new board member, is Tom Owens, Jr. Tom was on the board back in the uh, early teens, and then he resigned, and he's back on now. I did not hear from him. Uh, other than that, uh, Cindy is not going to be able to make the meeting today, and Harry is supposed to join us. Okay. Well, welcome to the new board members. You'll find this to be an enjoyable experience and uh, we look forward to working with you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, yes. great. So um, do we have any public comment? No one from the public contacted me to address the board today. Okay. So next on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes. And I think we have April, Yes, be the April minutes. minutes. To approve. Okay, so if everyone has had opportunity to review, review those minutes, are there any corrections or is there a motion to accept as presented? Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes and approve them. Okay, is there a second? Jerry, can you unmute? We can't ask the new board members to approve the minutes. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't present. Um, Steve, can you unmute Jerry or does she have to do that? I believe she has to unmute herself. I did not Do we have her. any other board members present? Mm, we have a quorum, but we don't have any other board I members. I think I, I just, let me try to unmute her again. Hold on. It's not working. Do we want to come yeah, back? Jerry's unmuted now. No, she's unmuted. Thank okay. you, Brenda. You're welcome. Jerry? Yes. Um, John just approved a motion to accept oh. the me meeting minutes from April. Okay. Uh, can you second the motion? And I absolutely will second that motion. Thank you. Wilson. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. So uh, we've approved the April meeting minutes. Is, is there anything else that needs to be approved at this point relative to meeting minutes? No, the minutes are fine. Uh, there oh. was just a statement for the canceled June meeting, excuse me, the canceled May meeting. And just to let everybody know what happened there was, uh, we were informed just prior to the meeting that we had new board members and the members that were not reappointed would have made up our quorum for mm -hmm. the May meeting. So, um, since they were no longer members, we couldn't have the meeting and I didn't know about the new members and they hadn't been informed about the meeting. So for those reasons, we decided to postpone it. Okay, a little complicated. And Steve, can you make sure that uh, the board sends our former board members, those that have rotated off a thank you note for their service? Yeah, if you look at the uh, end of the agenda for June, yeah. there are the letters that were sent to the former board members and the new board members by Brenda. Okay, great. Thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. Oh, they're very nice, Brenda, too. They're, they're, they're well written. Thank you very much. Steve assisted. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Real good <laughs> teamwork there. We do. We work as a team here. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, next on the agenda, bills for April. Well, it's the bills for May and for June. For May and June. Um, I'll make a motion to pay the bills for May and June, April, May, and June. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Communications, Steve. Okay. Uh, the majority of the communications were uh, letters of support uh, required by DEP or other agencies, uh, with the exception of in June, uh, we get correspondence from 
Valerie Kaplan, who's the emergency, excuse me, the environmental resource coordinator for the county on a project in German. Everything else, as I said, were basically um, letters of support or letters saying that the projects met one of the criteria for either a comprehensive plan, long range plan, uh, the, the greenways plan or anything of that nature. So there's really nothing out of the ordinary there. Okay, any questions on the communications? Okay, moving right along, um, old business. Okay, old business. Um, uh, can you hold on one second, I've got Harry on the phone. Yes, Harry. Uh, did you try the link that I sent you on uh, Monday? I'll, I'll send you a new link real quick. Okay, okay. Okay. Harry's having problems. You need a minute to do that, Steve. Go ahead. Yeah, just give me one second here. Uh, Carol sure. is on the line now. Carol, welcome Hi, to everyone. the board. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's an honor, actually, and thank you for inviting me to be on the board. Appreciate welcome it. Welcome aboard, Carol. Welcome, thank you. welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank you. We're, we're giving our board chair an opportunity to call in. Well, while, Steve's, so we'll doing, while Steve's doing that, if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce, we have two summer interns with us. Sure. On. We have Bob Kenny. Hi, Bob. Alec, Welcome. Alec Faber. Um, Bob is from Bloomsburg University and Alec is from Cornell. Um, they're going to be helping us out with plan reviews and they're also going to be doing a kind of a pilot program for a comprehensive plan for Moscow Borough. Moscow doesn't have a comp plan and they need experience on how to put a plan together. So we, they've agreed to kind of be the guinea pig or if you want, if, you know, <laughs> to, uh, to be the, you know, like the pilot for them to work on a plan for them. Oh, welcome aboard and good welcome luck. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Okay, I did sing, send the updated link to Harry. So hopefully he'll be joining us. Okay, we'll give him a minute before we get into the discussion about transportation planning. The wonders of technology. Brenda, I just saw your letters. They're beautiful. Nice job. Thank you. Um, Steve and I wanted to make sure that we thanked, um, you know, the outgoing board members for their service and that we welcomed the new. Excellent. Okay, did you get in? Okay. Ah. Uh, you know, while we while okay. while we're waiting for uh, okay. Harry Thanks. to phone Bye. in. Chet and uh, Carol and Tony, tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you ended up being appointed. Who wants to go first? <laughs> go ahead. Okay, go ahead, well, my name Carol. is Carol Tramali and um, I'm currently on Dunmore Council and I've been working with the county for a very long time, uh, particularly with the Scranton Abington Planning Association. And I just wanna say what a joy it is to be working with all the people that are on board with that, uh, as far as Steve, Mary Liz, and all the people. So I thank you so much. And um, that's, that's basically, I, I love the zoning, I love the planning, so I enjoy this and I look forward to being on the board. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Carol. We're happy to have you. Tony. Yes, hello everyone. And again, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm Tony Gerzani, I've worked here at KBA Engineering for, I'm afraid to say 33 years, it'll be this year. So I, I think most of, certainly Mary Liz and Steve have run into me a lot. Uh, I know Chet for a long time and Brenda and certainly Mr. Poshis. So what I, I, uh, I do a little bit of the engineering here at KBA, take care of a lot of the municipalities and someone uh, who I know very well called me and asked me if I was interested in, in coming on the board, Mr. Uh, Attorney Ruggiero, 
and I told him, all right. And then I heard from the commissioner that uh, they were going to put me on. So yes, thank you very much. And I'm excited to learn from everyone here and, and maybe I can offer something. Wonderful. Well, welcome aboard. And Chet. Thank you, thank you for having me. It is an honor to be here. And I was asked oh. if I would, I would consider being part of this and I cannot refuse. I've spent about 25 years plus or minus on planning commissions in both virtual. I'm currently the chair of the Lake Coral Planning Commission. I was the chair of our committee for four or six years. And reporting Chet, sorry, <laughs> we're having trouble hearing you. Is that any better? Much yeah. better. Much better. Okay. Um, I've spent about 25 years on planning commissions. I'm currently the chair of the Blake World Planning Commission. I was also the chair of the Archibald World Planning Commission and probably the worst recording secretary in Archibald World history. <laughs> so I envy uh, looking at the minutes and looking at the correspondence for this meeting. I envy whoever did them. Um, Worked on a lot of projects over the years. I worked with Mr. Pochis. I worked with Mr. Grisanti. Uh, we designed Power Park up in Archibald. We, we uh, worked on a lot of high profile projects. So I look forward to, uh, to being a, a part of this board. Wonderful. Thanks, Chet. I'll tell you what, based on your qualifications, your, your history and experience, um, you know, this, this board's going to benefit from, from having the three of you. Uh, join forces with us. So thank you very much. We look forward to working with you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Hey, Harry, so, Harry's on the phone. He had problems uh, logging in. His internet is down at the house. Okay. Hi, everybody. Rose, thank Hi, you very Harry. much. Hi, Harry. You're welcome. Hey, welcome all of our new members. Harry. Hi. Welcome. Thank We're going to be working you now. We got two months worth of business to do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, obviously, everybody introduced themselves. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're all aboard. Um, let's start our meeting. Stephen, I guess we have a, uh, uh, a quorum today. Yeah, yes, we uh, we actually we went through the minutes and the bills already. Fantastic. So we're up to old business. Yeah, yeah, great. Let's proceed with old business. First thing, transportation planning. Stephen? Okay. Um, <coughs> believe it or not, we are up to date on all of our invoicing to PennDOT. I submitted the uh, third quarter invoice two days ago to our liaison to take a look at before I submitted through the system. So we're up to date on all of our invoicing. Network planning, we have a lot that's been going on in the last two months. Um, Tina and I have been attending the Title VI environmental justice workshops that PennDOT has been putting on. Um, for the new board members, one of the requirements under the Federal Highway Acts that we operate under we have to do a Title VI and an environmental justice plan every 10 years or so. Uh, PennDOT has come up with some new regulations based on federal highway requirements. So everybody in the Commonwealth is undergoing training and that will be one of our updates for next year, one of our projects. Um, along with that, we are working on the uh, multi-regional freight plan Again, one of the planning processes that we need to do is freight planning. Uh, we've combined with the Northeast Pennsylvania Alliance, NEPA MPO, uh, Lehigh Valley MPO, Lebanon County's MPO, and Berks County on doing a joint uh, freight plan. Uh, the freight plan is, uh, we've submitted the uh, documentation to PennDOT to see if we can get approved for federal and state funding to undertake it. It's probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million dollars to about $300,000 to do the plan. Um, we have been working with the department on the Pathways Program, which is the program that PennDOT is looking at for alternative funding for transportation projects. As we all know with the updates that to the CAFE standards and with a lot of electrical vehicles out on the roads, uh, we are not getting as much gas tax revenue to undertake projects. And last year with uh, COVID, with people not traveling, they weren't buying gas. PennDOT took about an $8 billion hit in transportation funding. So they've look, they're looking at alternative funding sources. One of them is putting tolls on Interstate 80 bridges and some other bridges in the Commonwealth. 
There is nothing directly in Lackawanna County, but there would be three bridges that would be affecting us. One is in Susquehanna County, um, in uh, just before the New York Times, uh, in Great Bend. One would be in Luzerne County, uh, west of Interstate 81's junction, and one east of Interstate 80's junction at the Lehigh County line. So there's uh, some movement there. There's other ideas that are uh, being looked at, uh, tolling by miles and things like that, uh, congestion pricing. Uh, if you're interested, I can get you more information. I can get you the link, but you can get on PennDOT's website under pathways and you can find a lot of information out there. Um, I am also a member of the PennDOT Unified Planning Work Group. Uh, we are putting together the requirements for the next contract. The majority of our funding for highway planning comes through our Uni Unified Planning Work Program, our UPWP. Uh, that entails putting together a contract with the department and federal highways and federal transit. Uh, PennDOT is upgrading their requirements, so I am part of that work group to develop those requirements for it. One of the other work groups that we're on, this is a, a model project that PennDOT is undertaking for trail crossings. Uh, right now, there is no inventory of trail crossings on state highways. So District 4, which encompasses Lackawanna and Luzerne counties, Wyoming, uh, Wayne, and Pike counties, uh, part of that model. Um, what we're looking at doing is going out and actually inventorying trail crossings on the state system, uh, putting together the requirements for that, making sure that the software and the hardware works that we need to do, and then expanding it to all local crossings also, so that there, there would be a statewide database. Um, finally, we're part of the process for the update of four bridges in the city of Scranton. John's well aware of these with uh, Elm Street, Main Avenue, Parker Street, and West Lackawanna Avenue bridges. Um, we're going to be working with the department on and the city on those bridges, and we're part of that work group. Uh, finally, I was a speaker uh, at a, a press conference a couple of weeks ago on bicycle and pedestrian safety downtown. It was an outgrowth of our uh, bicycle and pedestrian plan, which we just approved, uh, just to complete it rather in December. Um, it outlines trail systems, rail, uh, road systems, um, share the road, those kind of things for the uh, downtown Scranton and downtown Wilkes-Barre areas. It was a bike county study and that was completed, as I said, in December. Again, if you're interested in any of this information, there is a website for the MPO. It's lltsmpo.com. That's basically it on the transportation. Um, Mary Liz, Zappa. Um, well, the first six municipalities went very smoothly. <laughs> so we have six in the books. Thank you. <coughs> Getting a phone call. <laughs> Um, we have three left, Waverly, Dunmore, and Scranton. Um, I know Carol, we're meeting again on Monday night. Um, Waverly also has their hearing again Monday night. Um, a little bit delayed, uh, Dunmore had some language in their ordinance that was carried over from previous ordinances with the landfill. Um, there was some opposition to it, so we had to uh, postpone it to go back and look at that language. Um, I believe we have resolved it, so I'm hoping that that will go that will go well. Steve and AJ will be at the Dunmore meeting um, Monday night. Carolyn from um, I'm sorry, AJ and Carolyn are from EPD, our consultant. They are coming from Pittsburgh to attend these uh, hearings to make sure that everything goes okay. So Carolyn and myself are going to Waverly. They've got a few residents that don't quite understand what's going on. And um, the supervisors were a little bit concerned uh, that, you know, that they wanted to address their concerns. So um, Carolyn's gonna be there and I'm gonna be there. So hopefully that one will go okay as well. Um, Scranton, um, Don King has told us they're a little behind. Um, they are working on a draft that we hope that will be in place on June 30th because that's the end of the um, grant period and they hope to adopt in July sometime. So we are about a month behind, but according to DCED, we're still okay as long as there's a draft in place at the end of June. 
Please. Mary Liz, there are no major objections, correct? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Mary Liz, what are you gonna do with your evenings once you wrap up supper? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I think Blakely's got some work for me there and, uh, and Moscow yeah. keeps me busy yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> Very good. Anybody have any questions on uh, Sapa? Great job. Great. Yep. Let's move on to real passenger while wow, our perennial project, Stevie. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we have some good news and some bad news. The good news is, well, I'll start with the bad news. We haven't met recently. Um, we're trying to organize some meetings with that. But the good news is, as we all know, um, we are now on Amtrak's radar for their service from Scranton to Hoboken. Um, that was a big hurdle to get on. Uh, it really wouldn't affect this because we would look, be looking at using New Jersey Transit for the light rail component, but having Amtrak in our corner also could envelop doing uh, heavy rail um, using the same trackage. So it's just an additional source of funding. On top of that, similar to the project we did last month with uh, Congressman Cartwright, office, he was soliciting proposals for rail projects. And the rail authority was working with him on submitting some projects, uh, again, to reestablish the rail service. And we still have the LSA grant funding available. So there is some prize, prospect, uh, excuse me, progress on it, uh, not as much as we would like this time. Also, um, with the shakeup with um, Bob Morgan leaving the con Congressman Cartwright's office and John Blake, there's a learning curve there uh, with John moving in. But John was well aware of it because Larry West is on the committee for the rail resumption. So it's just a little bit of a learning process and starting to get everybody organized and, and put it back together. Steve, do you think we should take the lead and set up a meeting and invite um, representatives um, from the congressman's office and um, um, Senator um, Marty Flynn's office, and maybe we can get it going again and with all of our other partners? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to send out an email just okay. to see about getting everybody together, trying okay, to get good. a meeting. Okay, good. Barb can help you with that. Anybody have any questions on rail service? Oh. Good. Let's move on. Hazard mitigation. Oh, it's done. It's adopted. We got our reimbursement and uh, we're in the process now of the municipalities adopting. We have, um, as of this, it was 15. It's actually up to 16 now. So moving right along. German just sent me an email that they approved. Who did? German. Okay. So that'll be 17 now. Great. Great. When's the final for approval? The, the, the county's already approved it. Right. So we just have to wait for, we have to get all 40 municipalities to uh, adopt the resolution so everybody's on board. Great, good. Any questions? Could you briefly explain the hazard mitigation plan to our new members? Uh, yeah, but according to uh, federal law, I believe it's the D Disaster Mitigation Act, I think in the year 2000 uh, states that all local jurisdictions have to have hazard mitigation plans in place to qualify for disaster funding. Basically, it's a plan to prepare for any type of uh, natural or man-made disasters, you know, uh, floods, tornadoes, windstorms, snowstorms. We actually put a section in on, on pandemics as well. Um, and um, every municipality has to do it, but if a county does it, then the local municipalities can sign on to the county plan and not have to do it themselves. So obviously to save quite an expense for each municipality, they've all agreed, you know, the, since this will be our third update, they've all agreed to participate going back since the first one that we've done. And if they do not have a hazard mitigation plan or haven't signed on to the county plan, they're not eligible for any federal disaster funding. Right. Any questions? Good. Our watershed action plan. Moving right along with that. Um, kind of again, the conservation district is taking the lead. Um, Brenda and myself are sitting on the steering committee. We just had a stakeholder meeting the other day. Um, conservation groups, some of the uh, farm owners, some of the utility companies, municipalities, um, a lot of good ideas and, and the consultant for the uh, project is moving right along. And I guess it has to be wrapped up in September. 
And we're pretty much on target with that right now. Great. And again, this is the Chesapeake Bay. The, the uh, EPA is requiring the county to address their pollutants. And I, in 2025, I guess, if there's not a voluntary plan in place, they're going to kind of come in and dictate what needs to be done. So that's why we're you know, taking the, uh, the initiative and doing it, having our own plan in place. Well, do we find a lot of it from the farms? A lot of runoff? Yes, yes. Yep. You yep. always think of the sewers uh, as being the yeah. Not the, well, the runoff, the stormwater within the combined sewers, yeah. But the yeah. farmland is big, is a big okay. issue. Yeah. Sure. Any questions? Let's move on. Our uh, comprehensive plan. Okay, we're wrapping up the comprehensive plan. Um, again, for the new board members, Pennsylvania municipalities planning code requires counties to update their comprehensive plan every ten years. Um, we worked jointly with Luzerne County about uh, 20 years ago to update the first plan, um, or actually to do the first plan. And when we did that first plan, it was a joint planning effort. It was a comprehensive plan, the long range transportation plan and the hazard mitigation plan. All three plans were done by the counties. Uh, it was the first time in the Commonwealth that all three plans had been done on a bi-county basis. So we kind of set a model for the rest of the state. Um, uh, 10 years ago, we updated the comprehensive plan and long range plan with Luzerne County. However, because of timing, uh, it didn't facilitate doing the hazard mitigation plan that needed to be done a little sooner. So that plan was not done jointly. And this go around again, we updated the comprehensive plan and long range transportation plan. Uh, hazard mitigation plan, as you heard, was updated earlier. Again, the, the timing cycles just did not work out. Uh, comprehensive plan, as I said, is supposed to be updated every 10 years. The long range transportation plan is a, looks at a 20 year horizon. Uh, our plan actually looked at 25 years, the first go around, 23 years, the second go around, and this go around was 26 years, I believe. Um, so we had the hearing on the comprehensive plan. The county commissioners held their hearing on June 2nd. There was no public comment. Uh, our consultants from Michael Baker did present to the board. Uh, as again, there was no public comment, the board adjourned and they are going to act on the plan on June 16th at their next meeting. Harry, I think you're frozen. I think he did. Look, I have somebody's here to have a plan stamped. I have to go do that. So, Steve, if you want to jump over the report and the internships and start on your reviews, I'll be back in like five minutes. Okay. Okay, really, um, going back to our May agenda, there was only one subdivision land development to look at, and it was uh, followed over into June. So I'll start with May on page 39 and 40. This is the Acadia Geisinger Behavioral Health Hospital in Music. Uh, there were a number of uh, items of concern that I had in the original. Uh, one of the things was the way the amendment was written for their PDZ zone district, uh, planned development zone. Um, and, and again, for those who aren't uh, aware of it, all of the Montage area is not zoned like a normal zoning ordinance uh, with R1s and R2s and C1s. It was a PDZ, which is a planned development zone, which takes into account percentages or acreages or sizes of all those types of developments. Um, originally, hospitals were not allowed in the PDZ zone. The ordinance was amended uh, in 2021 to allow them, but the way it was written, it did not list them as either principal permitted special exception or conditional uses. Um, so we had to look at it. And at that point, the hospitals were allowed in the C2 as special exceptions. I just made note of that and um, was not sure how they were handling that in music. There was also a lot of information that was missing, tax parcel, surveyor seal. Um, the subdivision land development ordinance and the PM Municipalities Planning Code Act 247 requires certification from the water company for service. Again, that wasn't included. And there were some other items. 
subsequently, I did receive uh, updates to some of this, uh, mostly on the zoning issues. So we changed our review from, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we changed the review recommendation from conditional to approved uh, with the additional information that I need. That's it on the June agenda, uh, or excuse me, on the May agenda. Going to June on page 10 and 11, Rainbow Land Corporation in South Abington. Um, this is the area of the old Rainbow Market on 611 just past Leighton, or Shady Lane Road. Um, the proposal is for a couple of structures there um, that is actually uh, in the floodplain and there are requirements for flood um, moving the, the height of the buildings and things like that. But along with that, they did not give me a lot of information that we needed to do a review. Uh, again, some of it was just housekeeping type things, certification from the water company and, and some uh, stamps and signatures. But some of them are uh, issues with interior vehicle access, um, with the zoning ordinance itself, and their ENS plans. So at this point, we are withholding a recommendation on that one. Steve? Yes. Steve? Yes, go ahead, uh, Jeff. That site has a lot of history. I mean, even in my days at SECO, we, we had a couple go-rounds with supposed developers, and it's a very tough site to develop. I believe that uh, stream actually runs through. It might be conveyed. It's it, it's a permitting nightmare. So uh, it, there's another go around, huh? Yeah. Um, Nothing ever came to it, Steve. We tried and it, it we you know just couldn't make it work. The there are wetlands involved along the creek. Yes. We did not do a delineation. Uh, along with that, they are actually decreasing the impervious surface, but they're not putting in any stormwater detention, of course, because they're in the floodway, or excuse me, floodplain. Um, but what I did recommend is they're oversized on their parking lot. So I'm recommending they do pervious surface to account for some of the infiltration and some other things with their curbing and, and things like that to uh, allow for more stormwater infiltration. Hey, John, given all of the, the uh, challenges with that lot, what, what do you think is the best use for that, that land? Well, I, I couldn't give you an opinion, Rosemary. Just look, I mean, it was somebody wanted to do commercial in there back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just a very hard lot to develop because basically the back of the lot is almost undevelopable because of the, all the restrictions with wetlands and the stream itself and everything else. It's a permitting nightmare. So... Yeah. Uh, I mean, when the market was there, it kind of just was grandfathered in. And then when it left, plus it's an H, you're on a very busy road. It's an HOP requirement for new entrances. And, you know, you got to comply with all the PennDOT regulations besides the permitting. I really don't know, Rose. I mean, it, it could be commercial, but I, I have, you know, the plan wasn't attached. So I wouldn't make a venture as to what could possibly be there. Mm -hmm. Green space. They were looking at a medical fast food <laughs> restaurant. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, next on the agenda, page 2425. Uh, Mary, let's take this. Lands of Triboro Industrial Park. Okay. This is one that Bob actually did. So Bob's doing a great job reviewing plans. Alec, we're going to start on next week because he started two weeks later than, than Bob. But um, this is this is the area in Oliphant where they're proposing that large industrial park um, with the, I believe it's eight, eight large warehouses. Uh, basically what they're doing is consolidating a bunch of lots and creating two parcels, one to the east of the Casey Highway and the other one to the west of the Casey Highway. Um, the, again, the standard highway occupancy permit uh, notation needed to be on there. They're accessing uh, from, there'll be an interchange from the Casey Highway and also Marshwood Road, which are both under PennDOT jurisdiction. Um, Troop actually adopted a new zoning ordinance in January of this year, and they did not have the correct information on the plan. So I'm assuming they were using the old ordinance. So they needed to update that. 
Um, the parcel that they're calling the commerce parcel, which is to the west of the Casey Highway and Oliphant is actually not in the same zone as the other parcel. So they did not have that zoning information on there. And again, Oliphant's zoning is about a year and a half uh, since they adopted. And I think again, they were using the wrong, the wrong information. Um, just a notation was missing from the Oliphant Saldo and then Oliphant also has a, a airport hazard and so does Troop. And I did not uh, acknowledge that on there. That is within the airport hazard for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Airport. And it, it really just deals with heights of buildings, which shouldn't be an issue, but it, it needed to be noted on the plan. Mary Liz, because this straddles two municipalities, was it, was it submitted to both? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very small portion was in troop, so we in our database we can't we can't select two municipalities, so we just put Oliphant in as the default. But yeah, they, it's the majority the majority uh, developer. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. When we were doing Mont Airy Casino and the lot consolidation plan, there was 455 square feet in Pocono Township, and we aired on the side of caution and got approvals from Pocono Township for 455 square feet. <laughs> of land that was actually over the, the line. But when you're working with millions of dollars, you want to be safe and correct. Right. Okay, and the last review is also uh, yours, Mayor Zabrowski. Again, hey. and this is one that Bob did as well. Zabrowski and Scott Township. This was kind of a an odd one. This There were two lots subdivided off of a, of a parcel and never went to the township for approval. So they were, they had deeds, I guess they're, they're in the process of selling. So the issue is coming up. Well, we didn't do it the right way. We need to come back and subdivide and get township approval. Um, no surveyor seal on the, apparently it's a different surveyor now that kind of, that, that got this opposed to the one that did it originally. Um, no surveyor seal, which is very odd for Joe Barrett, um, not to put it on there. Um, Yes. The zone, the zoning between the rural district and the residential district transects the property, which wasn't noted on there. Um, and then the one lot didn't have any bearings and distances on it. So I, I don't know what, you know, and again, no information on the, the sewage testing. So it's kind of like after the fact, but they, they've got to go back and correct everything other than otherwise the sale is not going to happen. So that's where we're at. Great. Any other development reviews? That's it. Most of yeah. them again were uh, lot line adjustments or two lot minor subdivisions. Um, we go over them if any of the board would like. Uh, because of the requirements of Act 247, the planning code, we have to make our comments back to the municipalities within 30 days. So um, the May reviews were already sent out. So we'll need a motion to approve those retroactively. And then once this meeting is over, the June reviews will go out. Entertain a motion to do so. So moved. Moved by Rose, second. I'll second that. Thanks, John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Approved. Good. Oh, hold on, Harry. I, there, there's oh. LaBella La projects in uh, both May and June. So I'm going to. I, I, you know, I'm just trying to do this because we need yep. someone from the existing commission to make the motion and second. Uh, but I'm going to abstain. I'm just making a note that I'm abstaining from any approvals on any LaBella projects contained in there. Very good. Steve. In the vote. In the vote. Yep. Okay. That was May. We'll need a uh, need a motion for June. I'll make the motion for the June. Thank Thank you. Second, second the motion. Second. second. Thanks, thanks, Rose. Mm -hmm. and we have one in June too, Harry. So uh, I'll make note of that too. My vote. You'll, you'll abstain for the one in June. Okay. I'll, include, I'll include those in yes. a minute. Yes. Yes. Very good. All in favor? Please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Good. Uh, summer recess. Well, I see all our new members. You're lucky you get a too much. You worked too hard today. <laughs> I'll need a motion to approve our summer recess for July and August. So I'll moved. Motion. Moved. Second. Jerry. Rose. All in favor? Aye. 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 What? No no's? 
<laughs> Very good. Um, motion's approved. Any other business come before the commission today? I believe, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe with Joe Lorenz's departure, he was the treasurer. So I think it'd be in order to uh, make a motion to, I believe, Steve, am I correct? And yes. we can make a motion to appoint a new treasurer just to keep the uh, the rules and regulations of the commission in order. So I'll, I'll nominate that we, uh, uh, Jerry Carey for treasurer. So move, is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominees? Hearing none, entertain a motion to approve Jerry Carey as our treasurer. Jerry, your salary gets doubled now. <laughs> <laughs> well. I hope I get an extra star in heaven for this then. Thank you. <laughs> so does your budget. <laughs> That's yes, great. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's, just, it's just on the comment every once in a while, the treasurer might have to sign a document, right, Steve? Or I know the secretary does from time to time. And yeah. it's just important to have uh, the offices filled. So okay. uh, the nomination's been approved and seconded, Mr. Chairman. Do we vote now or do we have to make another formal motion for Jerry? No, no I think we were approved. Okay. Okay, we're approved. God bless you, Jerry. <laughs> okay, thank you. It'll be good um, working with you. Thank you. Okay. Other good. business, Mayor, you want to mention about the uh, annual report? Yeah, the annual report was actually on the May agenda. And okay. did everybody get a copy of that? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I just highlight it real quick, you know, even though we were shut down for, you know, three months, we actually had more plans reviewed last year than the previous year. Um, and the big highlight was we've kind of shifted a little bit back to single family again, because we've had some larger um, residential developments. I don't know how that's working out now with the cost of uh, building materials. Um, and the big one again was the 9 million square feet of uh, warehouse space that we reviewed last year. Um, and again, it's just a snapshot. We were required and uh, to do it by the MPC. It has to be done by March 1st. So it is dated March 1st. Um, the old board members' names are on there because again, they were, in, they were on the board on March 1st. Um, again, we just highlighted all our, everything that we go over every month. We highlight all our projects, SAPA, the long range plan, the comp plan, the transportation planning, all of our support letters, our um, grants, that we do here um, and we just need to guess a motion to approve it so we can get it on the county's website. Well done, Liz. Thank you. Well done. Uh, anybody have any other business to come before the commission today? Oh. I just have one question. Um, Go ahead, Jane. Are we going to have an open meeting after uh, we recess for the summer vacation? Uh, Jerry, I'll answer that. As of now, um, we've been told that we're going to continue virtual until um, we receive notification from the commissioners that they'll be changing policy. Um, but given that we are going to be on recess, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we will be in person, but um, there's no guarantees as of now. Okay. I, I know uh, our clerk summer borough council meetings, our first open meeting was this month. So, uh, we wanted to thank the, the county. We have a new council chambers and uh, everybody's extremely happy to be all back together. So hopefully by the fall, we'll all be back together again. So everybody have a good summer in the meantime. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, one more thing, Thank compliments you. to you on your uh, getting those letters out to our uh, previous members. Uh, a little bit of research and uh, how many years they put in there. Wasn't there Steve or Liz? Yeah, we had to go back and look at some of the uh, minutes to find the dates. 17 years, so that's easy. <laughs> Good. Well done. Yeah, to kind of piggyback to what Jerry said, uh, Scranton City Council moved back then, I think, the 1st of June or somewhere around that time. They're, they're live from the building again. Uh, our, we're scheduling a planning commission meeting for next week. It's going to be held up at the uh, there's a community building at NAOG. Donnie's changing the venue, a little better parking. It's working out well. Uh, I think the rec authorities met up there and I think zoning is going to meet up there. So it, it would be nice to get back live again and in person and hopefully by September, that's a good goal to hopefully meet. So hopefully we're on track. I agree. I agree. Yep. Good. Um, any public comment? 
Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thanks for Second it. Second, John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Guys, new, new members, thank you so much for attending. We'll try to keep this to an hour uh, at most. Um, you have some great resources at the commission. Please use them. Um, Tony, uh, you're certainly aware of them uh, for yes. sure. Jet, Jet knows about them very well. Uh, but uh, Harry, and tell them. Tell them next month we want to hear some motions and everything from the new members. Motions. Well, <laughs> we'll we be ready by then. I'll be ready. Good. Guys, thank you all for the September. September. See yep. you in September. Yeah. Great summer. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.